Uh, greetings, everybody. Thank you all for being out here today. Again, thank you, Linda, um, MXGM Justice Committee, uh, for, for holding this press conference today. Uh, again, my name is Age Patterson. I'm the Coalition Coordinator for People's Justice for Community Control and Police Accountability, which is a coalition between different organizations that represent various communities of color as well as queer communities throughout New York City, including Justice Committee, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, and CAV, Organizing Asian Communities. Um, you know, I'm actually not from New York. I'm actually from Los Angeles. Um, I've yep. lived in Los Angeles during a time where we actually got the second coming of Stop and Frisk and a will be brought upon New York through Mayor Giuliani and the former commissioner, uh, William Bratton, who, was, who were the ones who first instilled uh, broken windows theory and so-called quality of life policing, which I've never understood that because it hasn't increased quality of life in any community I've ever lived in. But recognizing where these policies came from, from Giuliani and William Bratton, and then having William Bratton brought over to lead the LAPD was something that I dealt with for a large part of my life. And recognizing the differences it brought to Los Angeles through these types of broken windows policing, where in the same ways, the same things that were happening to communities of color here, the constant harassment of our youth, the, uh, you know, the increasing of the prison, the, the school to prison pipeline of our young people, um, the, the increased pushing of homeless people to live under alleys and in, in, you know, in underground basically to try to get them out of sight because the entire premise is if you don't see something then it's not happening, it's not still a problem. And we've seen these problems happen and I, I pray for the people of Oakland who now have to deal with William Bratton and are facing him in his third trek to you know, bring his horrific policies around the nation. Um, and you know, we've protested for many years, we stood alongside families like Juanita, Margarita, Aline, and Nicholas for many years on both sides of the country. Um, you know, the Stolen Lives Project, that is something that the October 22nd Coalition puts together, documents over 4,000 names of people since 1990 who've been murdered by police across the country. And we've protested, and we've come to court cases, and we've done all kinds of actions, and nothing seems to stop these police from continuously getting away with more and more killings, with more and more harassment of our peoples. We've tried to fight for laws many times, and we still are. And we still think that fighting on all these different levels from the macro to the micro is very important. But I will say that one thing that I've always believed really does work for our communities and really has shown to work is watching the police, is observing and documenting legally police activity. We've seen that from 1992 with Rodney King in Los Angeles. We saw that in 2009 with Oscar Grant in Oakland. We've seen it with Jatik Reed here in New York. Thousands of cases we've seen how the entire framing of the Ramarley Graham case in the Bronx got completely changed when the video camera, the security camera from outside of Ramarley's home revealed that this was not a case where the police were in hot pursuit. When Ramarley calmly walked into his home minding his own business and then was followed in by these cops who basically came and stalked him into his home, own home and killed him from his grandmother and little brother. We've seen all these cases come to light because of what? Because of cameras. Because of people who are under attack taking power back into our own hands. And so that's why I think, you know, through People's Justice, through MXGM, Justice Committee, and, and our cop watching practices throughout the city, we try to organize teams within communities who are highly under attack by police to be able to organize and lead their own teams to watch our own communities. Not only to hold police accountable, but also to let our communities know that in this world that tells us every day, this is a doggy dog society, every man, every woman for themselves. Don't worry about anybody else, just handle your own biz. What cop watching does is it tells our neighbors, brother, sister, I care about you. And I'm not willing to just go about my own business while more of my brothers and sisters are under attack every day. I'm gonna take these minutes out of my day, be late to where I gotta go because your safety is more important than anything else to me right now. And so cop watching, knowing our rights, spreading rights information to our young people and to communities that are constantly under attack, are going to be not the solutions to stop and frisk, not the solutions to racial profiling, not the solutions to police brutality in our communities and the constant genocide of black people, which it really pains me to know that that number is increased from 36 hours down to 28 hours that another black person is being slaughtered. But um, as I said, these aren't going to be solutions to these issues we face with police, but they are tools that we can use in our communities right now. So I encourage everybody, whenever you see police activity, take out your camera, record it. If you don't have a camera, stay and be a pair of eyes for that person. Let's bring the idea of community back to our communities. Let's bring the idea of caring about each other and not getting into this 
individualistic mind state where we put one of us over another one. Let's get out of that and come back to a place where we take care of our own. And when we fight from the bottom up and we, we do not allow police to get away with this against us anymore, that's when we're going to see the changes. Thank you. Woo